So thank you for coming and to, thank you for the organizer. This is the first year here in FOSDEM and I'm very happy about that. So today we are going to speak about how to debug and trace a RabbitMQ node. I will show some things, uh, some RabbitMQ internals. Please don't try this at home or better, don't try this in production. This is just to, to understand how powerful can be the, um, the, um, the Erlang tracing and debugging. So they already say, um, already said about me. Um, I'm currently working on RabbitMQ in Kubernetes. Forget to say that you can win this puppet today. I will ask some complex question. If you will answer correctly, you can win one of these. Uh, just naming for the people that don't know anything about RabbitMQ, Erlang, etc. Do you know RabbitMQ? Raise your hand. A lot of people. Do you use RabbitMQ in production? Is there someone that does not use RabbitMQ? You deserve this one. And the win. <laughs> As you can see, it's extremely hard to win. The there is another one, so be attention. So uh, RabbitMQ is a uh, message broker. The interesting part for this talk is that it's writing in Erlang and the command line in Eric Zero starting from RabbitMQ 3.7. A node is just uh, running Erlang uh, and Elixir application. The beam is the, um, the Erlang virtual machine. So let's start speaking about analyzing a Linux machine or a server. What you usually do is to connect remotely in the, in the server, analyze the processes, analyze the memory, kill some process if needs. Maybe the process is using a lot of memory, a lot of CPU, and you want to just kill it and restart it, and run your script inside the, 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 the server. So what if I say that you can do the same with an Erlang application? So. Uh, the remote connection in Erlang is called Erlang Remote Shell. The, there are uh, several tools inside the beam, like top, that is called, uh, usually there is an A, A top, A prof, etc., etc., inside the Erlang, uh, the Erlang Metro machine. There are several tools to, manage, to trace the memory, to understand what's going on uh, inside the beam memory, and you can execute a custom code inside the inside the node and one of the most interesting feature i think that is that, that you can load dynamically the code inside one beam even if the code is uh, even if the beam is remote you can load or you can send code to the to the virtual machine um, I usually use this kind of the feature when I have to work, uh, for example, inside Kubernetes, because in Kubernetes um, I have maybe I have to test some Kubernetes API, and I don't have all the Kubernetes local, and I have to uh, test it remotely. And this is one of the uh, um, best feature I think, from my personal opinion. So I will show you a demo live because I like, I am brave. <laughs> and I like to show some things uh, live. Here I have a RabbitMQ node running. That is this one. Can you see? All right. The host name is RabbitMQ Leap. My host name is Leap because I just don't uh, I spent uh, almost one hour to decide the host name of um, my machine and I need the default one. I don't have fantasy. And uh, we will use the Observer tool. We will access uh, inside the RabbitMQ database configuration because for the people that use uh, RabbitMQ, I think that if you want to look inside the RabbitMQ database, it is, is extremely hard. To, uh, to look inside the, the database. And uh, we will call an internal function, we will trace it, and we will load a custom module. So let me, okay, let's try this. So the first one is that we are going to, um, 
we are going to access to the remote RabbitMQ node. As you can see here, the, um, the local node, my local no node is called the bug, but I can call the local node as you prefer. Can you see it, guys? That's better? Okay. And here now I am inside the RabbitMQ node. It's easy, as you can see. Too much easy. <laughs> So the first tool that someone I think that no is observe observer no this one well this one so the first tool is the observer that gives you an over uh, overview uh, in what's happening inside your uh, virtual machine. Uh, the number of cores, the memory, you can check, for example, the um, memory utilization, I.O., uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is the processes uh, that you can order based on the memory usage or the number of the reduction, PID, et cetera, et cetera. The interesting thing here, here is this one. When you go to inside table view, you can analyze the ATS table and the Menasia tables. RabbitMQ uses Menasia only for the configuration. This is a common mistake that someone thinks that RabbitMQ use, uh, uses Menasia to store the messages. RabbitMQ use, uses Menasia only for the configuration. Okay, in this uh, in this way you you can see what there is inside the the, the database and maybe you have some problem with some queue and you want to check if the queue uh, actually exists or stuff like that. Uh, please don't touch the, the database, just view the database. You shouldn't never touch directly this uh, database, but if you want to try it, maybe just to break it, you can do that. So it's easy because a RabbitMQ is enough to delete the varlib Menasia uh, Barley, um, RabbitMQ, and you uh, recreate uh, RabbitMQ recreate uh, from scratch everything. Another um, the problem with the observer is that it requires the graphics library. And for example, when you uh, have a remote server uh, in Kubernetes, you don't have the, um, the graphics library. This is useful, especially when you work locally. There is another tool that is called Observer CLI. That is, let me try to do that. Can you see it? Okay, this is exactly the same for uh, observer, but it's uh, just using command line, so you don't have any problem with uh, custom libraries and you don't have to install anything. Again, this is uh, another great way to analyze the, um, the RabbitMQ node, but you can install this in your uh, Erlang or Elixir uh, application if you want. You should. You must. <laughs> okay, so now Let's let's try to to call some internal function inside RabbitMQ and let's see how to trace it. Let let's suppose that I want to create for some strange reason an queue. Oh. Too much, excuse me. Uh, test. Okay, so this uh, this function, RabbitMQ, blah blah blah, declare, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, this is the internal call, so, uh, the internal RabbitMQ call to create one queue. So we just created one queue using the internal calls. You don't trust me, right? No, eh? This one. Okay, you trust me now? Okay, so let me check time I still have time okay so now that let's suppose that you want to trace um, um, a specific call inside RabbitMQ but this is in general when you if you want to trace one call in your beam is enough to start DBC at the moment uh, I don't want to spend too much time on DBC because it requires 
another kind of the session, but just to let you know that you can uh, just start the DBC and uh, this is the pattern that the call that they want to trace, that is the clear with all the parameters. And this is the, um, I want to trace only the call, the function calls. Now, let's try again to create another queue. Let's call it, for example, tree. Here, as you can see, there is the full stack. The first one and the second one and the return function. Everything you can do, uh, everything live. So the RabbitMQ node is still up and running with the second queue, okay? Don't forget to uh, stop, oops. Don't forget to stop the DBC, especially if you are trying to trace a production node because the DBC is not totally free. If you are inside, for example, a loop or some complex function, the DBC can uh, use a lot of memory, a uh, lot of CPU, etc., etc. Now we, uh, we trace, uh, we are tracing the call using the console, but you can use file, that it's better. You can use TCP socket, uh, stuff like that. Now, uh, we can do some things more complex here, that is some things like that. Okay, this one. For example, let me, I just created 100 queues. Ah, okay, <laughs> the time refresh. 100 queues inside the, using always the, the, the same function, but just using a loop, okay. But when you start to work using console, it's a bit hard because, okay, you can write functions, but start to be extremely complex when you want to do some things more, more complex. So this is what I want to show you. I have here this Erlang file, okay, that is inside uh, my, local, my local machine. Uh, me okay okay it's enough to add the part and and load the um, and load the model now we have just added a new model inside RabbitMQ a custom model inside RabbitMQ uh, with a running node. I think that this is extremely, extremely cool. Now, say hello. The bin is very cool. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 Who was the, the, the first one? That one. <laughs> cool. Okay, so uh, in this way you, you can, as I said, add or remove code, etc., etc. So again, be careful for what you want to add in your in your system. You can also remove and delete the, the, the module when you have finished it. Or if you want, you can write your own custom plugin inside RabbitMQ, why not? Okay. Another thing, so when I say that you can do what you want, is some things like that. So you can also stop RabbitMQ and done. So that's and you can start again in this way. <coughs> okay, I don't have the, the queues anymore because I created the um, temporary queues. So for the people that know RabbitMQ, when you start, uh, stop and restart RabbitMQ with a temporary queue, uh, you don't have the queues, um, the queues anymore. So, uh, when you have finished, basically with your trace, the bug, and uh, stuff like that, is enough to uh, just kill the node and um, and it's done. Last note: you should use the hidden hidden uh, the hidden parameters. That is, when you use this uh, command hidden, you okay. Thank you. 
you will connect to uh, ArabTMQ uh, or another node and uh, your node will be not listened in the nodes call. That this is, should be the right way to do that. Now, I have only five minutes. As I said, uh, I worked recently to one uh, new feature in RabbitMQ uh, Kubernetes plugin, and I had to use a lot because I don't, I didn't have the Kubernetes in local, and I couldn't try this function in local. So, this was the best way to to work. Uh, after that, I copy and paste the the function and uh, it and uh, it worked. So security. Someone is thinking, I think that oh, oh my God, everyone can access on my module at this time. So don't panic because in order to access a remote shell, you need to have the port mapping port open. And you need the Erlang cookie. Erlang cookie is a sort of secret that you shouldn't uh, share with uh, other people. And it's enough to just to enable the firewall. And speaking about RabbitMQ, is enough to open the MQQ, MQP port. And uh, you should use uh, the remote access only inside Trust Network. Don't try this in production. For example, if you want to play with RabbitMQ, you can do that. But in order to create the queues and exchange, you should use the standard API because there are several controls around queue creation ex and uh, exchange uh, creation. So mm, play with it, but uh, when you are in production, be careful, you, should, uh, you have to know what you are doing uh, in production. So uh, I just have more or less a couple of minutes. Um, I finished it, but, but I want to point out some things that is extremely important for me and I think that the Italians guy, they will agree with me because when I go around, I see strange things uh, uh, marked as Italian dishes. I want to point out that spaghetti alla bolognese does not exist. <laughs> I am from Bologna and trust me, does not exist. The second one, spaghetti con porpette, does not exist because it's, you know, kids, it's, yeah, okay? Fettuccine linguini Alfredo does not exist. The question is, who is Alfredo? Because we don't know Alfredo. Do you know Alfredo? No, we, we don't know. Another thing is that the linguini does not exist. It's not an Italian word, okay? Linguini, maybe linguine, but linguini does not exist. And the last one, Italian cappuccino, only for breakfast, please. <laughs> not for lunch, not, please, please, guys. Thank you. So, uh, a few links that can be useful to trace, and uh, this is, uh, these are external tools that you can use, and if you want to just play uh, with it. If you have questions about food, wine, Etc. Feel free to ask, and I finish. Thank you. <laughs> ah, of course, if you have a question about RabbitMQ and body stuff, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we've spoken a lot about food already, so I will skip the food part. All right. <laughs> but uh, give, I know you're working a lot on Kubernetes right now, and yeah. I wanted to know if all that you have shown right now will still work in the context of a container, and most of all, if you ever experimented with the distroless containers, which is one of the things I'm working on the most right now. And yeah. I'm kind of interested in how this whole Erlang shell plays with the distroless containers. I didn't test it. I usually use the standard, uh, okay, if I can use the, um, the remote shell in the distroless uh, containers. So, I didn't test it. But I think that it should work. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work because Erlang, it creates uh, its own virtual machine, the port mapping, and it shouldn't work, but it's a test that I'd like to do. I usually use the um, standard RabbitMQ image. I work up the standard uh, RabbitMQ image. This is because I don't want to create another, another standard, you know? This is another another standard. I think that, uh, from my experience, the uh, the creation of a new node is enough fast. So I don't, why why you want to use this distroless? less? Is there any reason? Eh? Uh, uh. 
All right, so but speaking about Kubernetes, Kubernetes in, gen in general, I didn't have any special kind of the problem. The problem is only to access in Kubernetes once you are inside. I didn't have any problem. Questions? Uh, are there any like word production stories that you'd like to share, like some debugging? Uh, cool. uh, so I. S so let me say, if I have some story about debugging, et cetera, let me say that I spend more time debugging RabbitMQ than write code. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for example, the, there were a bug uh, in the garbage collector, because for the people that work with the garbage collector, the first thing is, uh, oh, garbage collector is very cool because I don't have to uh, destroy the memory, et cetera, et cetera. After a couple of months, hmm, how can I call the, the how, how can I force the garbage collector call? So I, I have to find the issue, but basically the, there, were, um, there was a problem with the garbage collector and we introduced uh, parameters that each x function uh, the garbage collector is forced to, to call. And um, I spent time with uh, tools that is called uh, eProf Erlang, this one. That is a, a timing profiling for uh, um, for Erlang. So you decide to to trace one specific call, and you can see uh, which function is called most, and you can decide. In this case, was uh, the the garbage collector because the garbage collector was uh, inside the the function for some reason, and we decide to call it each I don't know x number of the. Uh, X number um, number of the reductions. Uh, other stories is mostly about uh, uh, Kubernetes, and uh, yes, another one uh, interesting is that I found a bug in LazyQ. A few uh, do you know LazyQ in RabbitMQ? No, LazyQ is a kind of the the queue. I found a bug when you switch from the normal to lazy and using the the DBC and but logging in file because it was very high stack. Uh, using the DBC, I could find the, the problem and I could resolve the problem just, just was hard, but I could resolve the problem analyzing the, the stress, the, the trace. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.